<laughs> oh, fine. I was gonna have to do it anyway. Oh, sorry about that little dramatic uh, scream, but I have to cover with my pillow because, well, I just want to able to actually just adorn a scream like a little girl or anything. But, oh, hello, what's up, everybody? It is I, am the one and only. Merxy here, and I am from the likes of the Merxy Toys videos. Today, we're going to be doing a yet another Game Boy Advance Let's Play, and this time, ugh, we are tackling through our fourth Game Boy Advance Sonic game to be on the Game Boy Advance, as far as this is concerned. But, after the events of doing our Let's Play of Sonic Events 1, 2, and 3, well, this game is just a completely different story, like, an entirely different story, because we are doing a bit of a short Let's Play, actually, which appears to be Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis, released for the Game Boy Advance in 2006. Yeah, the same year as when Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 roll around, and especially noticeable about the fact that, well, other Sonic games during the forms of 2006 as well, like Sonic Riders, Sonic Rivals, and that's pretty much about it. So because of this though, this game marks the 15th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, and let me tell you, it's not a good year for Sonic. <laughs> I gotta say this right now, because this game in particular, this is basically Sonic the Hedgehog 1, like we used to play back in the forms of the Sega Mega Drive days, or the Genesis days, if those of you lived in North America. But, um, I'll explain more details about this, because as you can tell, I'm gonna be playing this on the emulator, because I don't have the original cartridge for it, and because there's a good reason why I'm not gonna get the original cartridge version of this game, because... Well, like I said, this is basically Sonic the Hedgehog 1, except, as you can tell, that this is a different kind of port from Sonic the Hedgehog 1, because there are multiple versions of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 out there for most compilation games, and especially noticeable with uh, certain bundled stuff from the likes of in the past, and especially noticeable with some uh, digital re-releases on the past consoles, which I'll get into more details about that in a moment, because as you can tell, we finished the very first act in Green Hill Zone, and let me tell you, right off the bat, the presentation on this, while the visuals are still relatively the same as the Mega Drive counterpart, but they horribly butchered a lot of things, like a large number of things. Like, for example, as you can tell, we ended up on a special stage, as you can see. But, as you can tell, we instantly managed to be able to win for that little jewelry thing that we went through. Because the actual collusion detection, or the actual physics in the special stages are... Honestly, very wonky, because you could just essentially try to able to actually break for the crystals super easily. Like, you can't do that in the original, because, well, relatively speaking, just be off of the challenge in the original. Now, here's one really bugging thing about this particular, uh, rubbish port of Sonic the Hedgehog 1, is that, well, for one noticeable thing, is that, well, let's start with a number of things. Well, First of all, the music is horribly butchered, especially noticeable if this is on the Game Boy Advance after all, so nothing else about the music in this entire port is not that very good, especially noticeable it's nowhere near as good as the good old classic Mega Drive Genesis kind of vibe to it. Like, usually because this is the original game, well, except the fact that, well, relatively speaking, is the fact that, well, there's another issue I have with this, is the fact that the physics and the momentum is screwed up, especially noticeable because, well, relatively speaking, is the fact that if you try to able to let go of the directional pad, but for some reason, Sonic just keeps on moving forward, and as a result, though, it just doesn't work very well, which, unlike the original game, if you let go of the directional pad, either left or right, then Sonic stops completely. Whilst in here though, it just keeps moving slightly, and there were a few times that you instantly run into the actual hazards so, so easily, and especially noticeable about the fact that, well, look at this spin dash right there, as you can tell, that it just feels really wonky, and not to mention though, it's the fact that, well, relatively speaking, it's just the fact that, well, 
I, I can assure you that the Game Boy Advance doesn't usually have some capabilities when it comes to the forms of Sega Genesis or Mega Drive blast processing department and also that you know like I said like uh, the special stages while well, it's a bit wonky and also the physics and even the forms of the movements on this is very weird like super super weird and also it's just it just feels a bit sped up and it's just wrong in these levels and everything else is just going all like bizarre and what's even from uh a bit more embarrassment about this is the fact that, relatively speaking, this game came out in 2006, and I think this game came out on the exact same day as Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, for those of you who lived in North America. Because I say this is because this game never gets its release on Japan and in Europe, or even Australian countries as well. So, this game is entirely exclusive to the North American um, owners. So, because of that, well, luckily in the UK, though, we didn't get the game, which I guess is a good thing. But for those of you who lived in America, oh, I'm so sorry for you if you ever experienced this monstrosity game, along with other bad Sonic games out there, ranging from, um, let's just say, Shadow of the Hedgehog, or uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Or heck, even with the forms of uh, Sonic Lost World on the 3DS, not on the Wii U though, because for me, the Wii U version is pretty underrated, but the 3DS version, ugh, it just looks bad. And um, also, same applies to the forms of Sonic Labyrinth, and even especially noticeable with uh, Sonic Free Riders with this terrible controls. While the visual still looks very uh, gorgeous, even on the Xbox 360 title, it still looks really gorgeous. But the gameplay and especially noticeable, the controls just ruins everything. And even worst of all though, is Sonic Boom Rise of Lurik. Which, as a result though, yeah, this is just... It's hard to explain, because even then, though, that's just basically how I can usually think about it. Oh, and another thing, too, is the fact that, relatively speaking, that, um... Oh, jeez. The amount of slowdown on this is everywhere. Like, literally, every single time, whenever you run fast, or even just trying to able to just continuously going, and the frame rate... It's nothing to do with the emulator, though, or even my, uh laptop screen capture is just the actual game itself like literally it doesn't matter if it's on the emulator or uh, on the original cartridge version it, you still come across into any lag and also the physics themselves is completely out of whack i mean the biggest example i can think of is the first bo boss fight with robotnik look i'm constantly bouncing on top of him you can't do that in the original, that would make the fight a bit too easy. And because of this though, because of this very whacked out physics, it just makes every single boss is a total joke. Especially noticeable on this very first, uh, first boss encounter with Dr. Robotnik. And because of that though, yeah, it's embarrassing. Especially noticeable, it's bad enough with, uh, you know, all the slowdown you come across into, an even worst case scenario, whenever we get into the fourth zone in a game, Oh god, the fourth zone will be hellish in this version of the game because, believe me, you will come across into a lot of lag and a lot of frame rate drops every now and then, and it's just, this is a mess. This is a horrible, horrible mess. Although, the only good thing about this is the fact that before you start the game, you do have two different uh, modes you can able to play, like there was the original mode and the anniversary mode. You want to know what's the difference is between these two modes? Well, for one noticeable thing is that, as you can tell, I'm playing this particular game as a Let's Play in the Anniversary mode. And because of this though, the only difference is between these two modes is that the original mode plays exactly like the forms of the regular Sonic one, like no spin dash and everything, whilst in the Anniversary mode does have a spin dash, and that's how the positives ends. Like, even though the visuals do look very identical to the Mega Drive version, except... Oh, and there's also another thing that's really bugging for about this particular game as well, is that if you're following for our Let's Play of uh, Mega Man and Base, at least specifically the Game Boy Advance version of that game, that the obvious answer about the fact that the biggest issue with this is, is that not only in the combination of the forms of not only horribly butchered music and also very out of whack uh, physics and even the collusion detection is way off 
And on top of all that stuff though, a lot of lag, a lot of slowdown, and the worst event of them all though, is the godforsaking screen crunch. So you know what that means, you can't really tell what's up ahead of you, and to make matters worse, is the fact that you can't really tell of what's gonna be higher up. Like, as you can tell, I've already got poked myself with the forms of that stupid, uh, little stripey thing. Like, normally on the console version, to be more specifically either on the original Mega Drive version, or, uh, the, uh, any other combinations out there. At least you can able to see what's up ahead, and especially noticeable for higher above, and even down below as well. But for some reason, in this particular rubbish port of Sonic 1, you can't really see everything, which much like in Mega Man and Base, for the Game Boy Advance, well, there's a good example about the fact that I highly recommend you guys to play the console version of the games, rather than on the handheld for the Game Boy Advance, because uh, I don't know, it's because you might also be able to come across into it. Very, very, very picky, uh, you know, leaps of faith, and also you can't really tell, you can't judge the distance well enough, and it's just... Ugh. This is the worst, people. This is quite literally the worst. Although, I wouldn't say this is not the worst game I've ever played, it certainly is more likely the worst version of Sonic 1. Like, I really highly re recommend you able to play Sonic 1 as in... Uh, the original cartridge version on the Mega Drive slash Genesis version, at least assuming in the, in the PAL territory, unfortunately we have to do with the rubbish, sluggish, uh, 50 hertz mode because of slow music and, uh, very floaty, uh, controls and momentum and stuff, but, uh, I seriously highly recommend the actual first game in the series within Sonic the Hedgehog on other compilations, including, uh, the bundled in with Sonic Generations, and it was on Sonic Jam, and Sonic Mega Collection, and Sega Mega Drive, uh, Collection on the PS2 and PSP, and even especially noticeable with, uh, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and heck, even with the forms of, uh, the upcoming Sonic Origins on, uh, you know, modern hardware, including Nintendo Switch. At least, speaking of the Switch, there was also the Sega Ages version of Sonic the Hedgehog was included, and especially noticeable with the forms of the 3DS, which, mind you, this is on the Game Boy Advance version, by the way, because obviously we have to cope with this very horrific, uh, screen crunch and all that stuff. At least unlike the DS version, which is to be more specifically Sonic Classic Collection, at the very least you can see what's up ahead. But, uh, and, and same applies to the 3DS one as well, and even a Switch, don't forget. So as a result though, yeah, because play those versions instead of this is, especially noticeable on the iOS version, specifically made by Christian Whitehead version, because that particular version of Sonic 1 is more superior, just because they fix a lot of issues with the forms of the original version of Sonic 1, and especially in sport, they actually had more content and more features, specifically on the iOS version, because, well, relatively speaking, I always attempt to play the 2013 re-release version of Sonic 1 any day, so... But this is just... Ugh. I think that's as far as I can say about this is, is because, well, Relatively speaking, this is just a bad port of Sonic 1, like... I know for the fact that the original Sonic the Hedgehog, the one that started it all, was a fantastic game. Like, I will still say, it still is one of my favorite Sonic games, along with Sonic the Hedgehog 2, along with Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles, and uh, Sonic Mania, Sonic CD, and the list goes on. But... Eh... This game is just bad. This game is literally bad. But anyways, but I will say this right now, it's, like I said, it's not one of the worst games I've ever experienced, but it's, quite literally, it's probably it's my second worst Sonic games I ever played, along with, uh, Sonic Free Riders and, uh, let's just say Sonic Labyrinth, and especially noticeable with Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Although, because keep that in mind, is the fact that, like I said, this game came out on the exact same day as Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, and, and remember why I mentioned this before, about the fact that the 15th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog was not a very good year for this, uh, blue blur, so because of that though, yeah, I feel so sorry for this blue blur, because after the events of, uh, 
a really damn good uh, 10th anniversary that we've got, which was Sonic Adventure 2. Not only for the Sega Dreamcast, but also the GameCube ports came out during that time as well. And um, before uh, this amazing 20th anniversary with uh, Sonic Generations, and uh, before a pretty average uh, 25th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, ranging from, well, the only game they've got in there, which is of course Sonic Boom Fire and Ice, which I guess is a good game, and before Sonic Mania was a thing, which is a really, really, almost like a masterpiece game, despite the lack of originality. And an okay one for Sonic Forces, despite the fact that most Sonic fans find that game a lot of a disappointment. But, uh, at the very least, before when uh, the 30th anniversary comes into play for Sonic the Hedgehog, at least it's alright. I mean, the only game we've got at the moment is, is uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate. But then, like I said, we'll eventually be able to come across into ourselves uh, not only Sonic Prime for its Netflix series, and especially noticeable with Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the movie, which I'm super excited about, and it's especially noticeable with Sonic Origins, so maybe I can probably able to actually get Sonic Origins for the Nintendo Switch, so that way I can play those awesome classic Sonic games on a go, so that way I don't need to worry about just able to play on TV all the time. Well, at least for the most part sometimes, but we'll see, because we still haven't heard anything from Sonic Origins for such a long time, at least in almost like a year ago almost. Well, at least for the most part anyway. So, yeah, a uh, few things I want to explain for this point today, and that is the fact that today is, is of course the 8th of March today, in this case in 2022 today. Like, I was expecting if I was able to actually let, uh, myself were able to actually go back onto Super Mario 3D All-Stars, but like I said before, uh, we got to wait until on the 1st of June, until when it gets to summer, sadly, because, well, we'll just try to get out of the way with the forms of other games first before we're able to actually dive right in, and as far as I'm aware is the fact that not only that Pac-Man is almost going to be wrapped things up with the forms of his Let's Play of Klonoa 2 Dream Champ Tournament, and also, on top of all that stuff though, Raid the Flying Squirrel was also going to be able to hopefully try to finish up with the Let's Play of Mario Party 7, which now might actually be happening for the sake of the forms of this entire week or so. And um, afterwards though, we can probably expect to be able to actually do another set of Let's Plays in the future, but we can't tell you which one's which though, because either way though, yeah, you'll find out soon enough, so... Anyways, let's get this godforsaken green, or should I say, the damn fourth Chaos Emerald. Because, you know, we're now down to, uh, four Chaos Emeralds right now. And in fact, the matter is, though, is that every single Chaos Emerald's color is relatively the same as the original version, except... Well, you know what I mean. That, uh, most people seem to really don't care about getting those Chaos Emeralds in this hor horrible port of Sonic 1, because, you know what I mean, with all that janky frame rate, and not to mention though, is the fact that you able to actually just to almost get crushed like that, especially noticeable with all this whacked out physics, and uh, not only that though, no wonder why that this game never saw the re-release on the, uh, the Wii U Virtual Console at this rate, because, well, I can definitely see why that most people really despise this particular port of Sonic 1. Like, saw it, someone nowhere near as good as the forms of, uh, Sonic Events 1, Sonic Events 2, and Sonic Events 3. Despite I still find Sonic Events 3 might be still as my least favorite of the entire Sonic Events trilogy of games. I mean, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed some bits of Sonic Events 3, most notably- What the hell? Did I just- did I just somehow clip for that blocks, despite the fact that it just... What is going on with this game? Oh, Jesus Louise, why am I doing this? Although, to be fair, for the sake of almost trying to catch up for certain Sonic Let's Plays, that's for sure, but... Why do I have to do this? Oh, I just want to just want to move on to uh, other gaming series I would love to do, but apparently we only have to do with this, I'm afraid, because... Fun fact, uh, originally, I was expecting to be able to originally try to do this back in, uh, last year in 2021, but I refused to do it because, well, relatively speaking, because I've heard 
horror stories with this game because I think the first time I actually experienced this game was back in the forms of about a decade ago because around that time I didn't actually got that much Game Boy Advance games to try out. To be more specifically some other games like uh, the Kirby games that uh, those Kirby games on the Game Boy Advance are fantastic and um, also trying out of my very first uh, main Pokemon game called um, Pokemon Emerald because, you know, pretty hard to find right now for the original cartridge version of Pokemon Emerald. So, at the very least, I enjoyed that for a decent amount of time, and especially noticeable trying out uh, Sonic Events for the first time. I absolutely adored it, but uh, because obviously that game is more accurately the true Sonic the Hedgehog 4, at least in my opinion, so, uh... Oh, God, no! Oh, God! Darn it, it pushes me back! Oh god, the slowdown and the actual hit detection on such an object is super easily to get hit. And it's just... It's just unpolished. Like, gee, no wonder why it's never gonna get the sequel from the likes of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Genesis for the GBA, because if that exists, that'll make things ten times worse if, uh... You know, when if you... Oh my god, this... Like... Did you saw that? I, I just touched the lava, but then I didn't get hit by that. I literally did not get hit by that. That's supposed to hit me. Oh my god, what is going on? I got no words to say for this point, guys, because, well, I was expecting if I was trying to able to take a look at it, but I have no choice but to be able to do a let's play for you guys, especially noticeable that I can give you the most bad example of how this game sucks, along with the forms of other Sonic games that are consistently bad, well, throughout the years anyway. Well, some are good, ranging from, well, what's the status right now? That when it comes to the 15th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog games, when it comes to its fully ranked games during that specific anniversary, I will say that uh, it does manage to able to have about roughly four games in particular from that anniversary. Like, there was one SSS that involves around uh, racing, which involves around utilizing the extreme gear. And uh, I found the original Sonic Riders to be an underrated gem, in my opinion. Although most people did not really care for that game all that much though, because I know for the fact that a lot of people seemed able to think that the loading curve, it does take you a lot of work by able to doing a lot of loading curve, but that's as far as I can usually think about it. And uh, I will still say that Sonic Riders is definitely is the best game in terms of the 15th anniversary uh, Sonic the Hedgehog games, at least in my opinion, because, well, obviously the visuals do look very, very good for its time, and uh, Along with that, uh, there was Sonic Rivals on the PSP, which I found was okay, but not the best though. I kind of prefer Sonic Rivals 2 a bit more, just because of, uh, you able to actually have more characters to your disposal. And I found the actual, uh, the game's AI it certainly feels a lot balanced in comparison to this very unfair AI from the first game, because they always catch up to you every now and then. But, um... You probably know what I mean. And, uh, on the third position, when it comes to the, uh, well, Sonic the Hedgehog's 15th anniversary selections of games, uh, third place goes to, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Well, at least I found a game, like, at least there are some good parts on Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, although nothing can be perfect though, it might actually be pretty mediocre. And, uh, I will still say that the soundtrack in Sonic 06 is probably just one of the best aspects of Sonic 06, but, uh, and also Sonic's gameplay I found is quite enjoyable despite of how, uh, underwhelming that is, because obviously with the lack of, uh, spammable homing attack, and also with all that glitches that it involves you run into, and, uh, also I still found, uh, Shadow and Silver's gameplay style, what's uh, I'm nothing horrible, but it's just the fact that it just gets overstated as welcome. Like, you know what I mean, Shadow's combat-oriented gameplay gets super old very fast if you expected you were able to just try to do a lot of combat involvements here and there, but that's as far as I can usually try to think about it, so... Anyways, here we are, on to Spring Yard Zone. Oh, jeez, why did they butcher this amazing music? Ever since in the 16-bit version, like, I always enjoy the Spring Yard Zone music back in the day. 
but on a GBA though, I mean, listen to it. Jeez, what have they done to this amazing masterpiece of the music? Oh, jeez. And also, that I've noticed is the fact that certain sound effects are actually very odd and out of whack. Like, to be more specifically, if you're trying to able to, like, uh, jump in into any bad nicks and stuff like that, it just goes like, BOOP! Whilst new forms of the original version of the game, it just goes like an instant, like, door kind of syndrome. But for some reason, in this awful port, they just goes like, BOOP! And stuff like that, which also applies to boss fights too. Like, literally, relatively speaking, if you try to able to take down a bit of damage to uh, Dr. Robonic on certain boss fights, I just really found the actual crushing sound effects is actually super satisfying. Whilst in here, though, it just... Did Sonic just somehow moonwalks? Don't tell me it becomes like a, uh, a younger brother of the actual Michael Jackson or something like that when he does like a moonwalk. Ah, oh, jeez, this game sometimes, it just goes, feels a bit all over the place. And it's pretty obvious that the number four spots on uh, the, uh, I will say, the worst for last, which is, of course, this game, because what have they done to this amazing Sonic the Hedgehog? Like, I was expecting this will be a great project, but it turns out it's horribly butchered. Like, usually, usually relatively speaking, at this point in time, I'll get some more details about this whenever we get onto on first day because, well, like I said, this let's play is gonna be super, super, super short because, let me tell you, getting to those special stages is super duper fast, especially with how weird those physics, as you can see. Like, literally, I was almost expecting to try to touch the Chaos Emerald, but as soon as I go near to the Emerald's edge, then, for some reason, then the game just goes like, well, you got it instantly, so that takes a win, I suppose, but oh, I just don't get it. I just literally don't get it at all. But anyway, let's just keep going on and just keep continuing, unfortunately. Because I know for the fact that a lot of people... Oh, what the hell? I, I was expecting to jump from there. Oh, jeez, what's wrong with this game? Oh jeez, this game is gonna give me a bit of an obnoxious headache if I decide able to just play at all. But, just get rid of this crap meat, launch into that- <gasps> What the hell? Do you see that? Because that's the prime example about the fact that how bad the screen crunch is in this game. Because you can't really tell what's up ahead, and especially noticeable you get crushed out of nowhere, as you saw from those little steps. Like, what's up with the steps? Oh jeez, first death of this entire playthrough, so... And it's even weirder, is the fact that, uh, relatively speaking, as you know, is that every time when Sonic dies, then basically it gets, like, almost the exact same animation as the, uh, the normal version, except for some reason, they match things, uh... Uh, it's like a weird mashup between uh, getting deaf when Sonic goes like a shocking face and at the same time fused it with a drowning sprite, which without bubbles. So, yeah, this is kind of an odd decision, isn't it? So, anyway, so let's go and just keep on moving. And yeah, the physics right there, if you try to roll, it just seriously screwed up. At first I thought that Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1's physics was bad enough. Well, let's just say this particular physics is more of the worst. Like, seriously, why does that usually get screwed up? Oh god. But I will say this, it's the fact that I will say that um, one time what if I managed to able to play one of those, oh god. That was a close one! Okay. So yeah, uh, there that was that one moment in one time, back in the forms of in 2009, where I somehow, I accidentally stumbled across this very bad Sonic the Hedgehog bootleg Game Boy cartridge games, which basically involves around in, uh, basically it's like multiple versions of Sonic bootleg games. Like, there is Sonic 3D Blast 5, and also Sonic Adventure 7, 
and Sonic Adventure 8, which basically, what I've noticed on the forms of the actual gameplay footage with those three games combined, they look exactly the same aside from the actual different title screen, and especially noticeable with this hor horrible, horrible music. Like, there was that one time where I've managed to able to actually try out this very expensive Game Boy Light uh, handheld, and one of those games I got with it, well, at least specifically it's not with me anymore, but one time when I managed to play this very cool, not gonna lie, a pretty cool compilation uh, Game Boy cartridge, which appears to be like 56 games in one cartridge or something like that, I'm guessing it's likely based off from China and stuff like that, and one of those games in particular they included is Sonic 3D Blast 5, and I was really looking forward to trying it out, and it's bad. It's, it sucks. Really, really sucks. Raging funny forms of very bad physics, and also on top of all that stuff though, this ear-rape, ear rape, um, you know, music that is extremely, extremely loud and obnoxious, which almost get my ears bleed. And, uh, on top of all that stuff though, most of those sprites with those very bad uh, bootleg Sonic games on the Game Boy, they heavily borrowed the exact same sprites from not only from Sonic 1, but also Sonic Triple Trouble from its Sonic's sprites, except, well, we don't get ourselves a very satisfying, uh, you know, movement speed and all that stuff, which because of this though, yeah, although, Usually about face speaking, that's as far as I can describe it, which, although I will say this also, is the fact that, uh, relatively speaking, I, uh, usually I, 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 I think the first time I actually experienced this particular, um, Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis with the, the horrific port to Sonic 1, and that was the fact that there was that one time when, uh, there was a YouTube channel called, uh, King, Game King 53, which uh, I used to watch it back in the day, but for some reason, I uh, it's no longer there anymore, which I do enjoy in the past though still, but uh, in one of those games in particular he did review, is by the forms of Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis, which apparently is one of his uh, first ever re reviews he's ever done, and he describes a lot of bad things about this game, which is definitely true, because obviously, like I said, this game is a massive mess. Like, ah, oh jeez, I just got knocked back by that stupid bumper. And also, I can't really tell if I was trying to able to get the invincibility box and a speed up sneakers, um, you know, item monitor up there, because like I said, the physics is screwed up, like, a lot. So, yeah, that's as far as I can describe about the forms of Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy fans, and it's just, well, yeah, let me know in the comments below for the question of the day. Uh, what do you guys think about the forms of the actual game Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance? Because, let me tell you, ugh, this game sucks. Because, I'd like to hear your thoughts of what's your first impressions of this particular monstrosity port of Sonic 1. Because, still, you probably should still- What the hell? Does that block usually disappear for some reason and then just reappear it again? Oh my god, what is up with this? And also, the invincibility music, it just feels a bit, kind of a slower version of uh, the Sonic Events 1 invincibility theme or something like that, which I'm not exactly sure how that's going to represent with that stuff, but... Oh jeez, I think I'm almost going to get thrown up at any moment. Well, after I'm done with this recording, I'm just going to go to the, uh, to the bathroom and then just throw up and then make myself a bit better, well, at least for now. Ah, oh, jeez. So yeah, it just makes this boss fight a lot easier because, well, you can just essentially just try to keep on attacking him like so. Yeah, 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 you get the idea, you get exploded. So, we're gonna have to end things up at this point right here, so join me ugh, next time on Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance. Let's just hope I will finish the game during time, which... Oh no, we gotta be on Lapwave Zone, aren't we? Oh, see you then!